Live from New York City, it's the Wendy Williams Show. Hello, this is the Hot Topic Show. We won't judge, but we're judging. It's going to be Drew Now, here's Wendy! Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for watching. Another Manic Monday in Gotham. <laughs> Say hello to my co-host, my studio audience. Fantastic. How you doing? How you doing? Better now that we're back together. Let's get started. It's time for a Hot Topic. Come on. I mean, the best I can figure is if your Christmas lights aren't up yet, then there's probably no point in doing it because it's so much work. You know, you gotta go to the attic or down to the basement. You gotta fight the lines at the stores while people look for those eggs, those hatchables. You're trying to muddle through picked over Christmas decorations and stuff. And it's so much effort. You know, if you would just do it like the day after Thanksgiving and then keep them up until January 7th. That's the pull down day. Cause yeah. that's when they pull down the big tree here in New York at the Rockefeller Center, which to me, that tree dictates how, you know, the rest of us tree, you know? So um, good luck. I was speaking to my sister over the weekend. It was so funny. Hey, Wanda. So now she says a very lengthy conversation, in which she told me that she is really contemplating getting that light thing, you know, that, that, um, that thing. And then all the lights project on your house. Yeah. It looks so good on TV. I don't know that I could be that house though. But anyway, and the other thing that came out of our conversation was, <laughs> this is very random, please. Good morning, mommy. Good morning, daddy. <laughs> mommy, I had no idea that you auditioned and got a part in the vagina monologue. <laughs> I'm not talking. I'm not talking, it's in Miami. My mother didn't tell me, I had no idea. She sat in the line of folding chairs. If you've ever been on an audition, then you know they're hours. She sat there for hours. You know, the vagina monologues is all about private parts. My sister was red with, you know, with like, oh my gosh, mommy is talking like I've never heard her talk. I was like, I had no idea she was auditioning. So mommy, I'll call you later on today, show girl. But I, I see what's going on. <laughs> yes. So I didn't watch the Real Housewives of Atlanta last night because I was busy. You know, the boy was out socializing and I had things, you know, when your kids go out, you like to look in their room. So he was supposed to be home by eight o'clock and he got home by eight, but then after they go out, you know, you gotta quiz them. That's a whole nother hour. The housewives come on at eight, so I missed it. Anyway, apparently uh, Cynthia opened up about her divorce with Peter and I got dragged into the mess. Oh. <laughs> Take a look. Did y'all talk about Wendy Williams? His main thing with me was the whole thing about being blindsided. Our first guest, everybody, has been married to Cynthia Bailey for six years, and he said that he was totally blindsided by her publicly announcing that they're getting a divorce. We talked about separation, but we didn't talk about divorce. I felt a little bit betrayed because I have always said that I want this divorce to be smooth and respectful, and I still feel a little guilty about initiating the divorce, but now it's feeling like it's starting to get a little ugly. 
Well, you know, divorces are usually um, ugly. Um, one of the things that I, although I didn't see last night's episode, I was reading on social media, is it true that Kenya's boyfriend, Matt, is accusing Kenya and the show of staging their entire storyline so she could stay on the show? See, I could believe that. I, I believe that. I do. You know, um, apparently, and I guess I missed this episode, he threw a boulder in a garage window and it broke glass. And then she called the cops on him. And so now he's talking all out of order. Like Matt, even if this is true and it's for her storyline, her storyline makes for a paycheck for you and your storyline. <laughs> so I don't know why you're talking, but thanks for the tip we already knew. <laughs> I, there's so many storylines and plots and twists. People will do just anything to stay on, um, you know, the, these housewife shows. Kenya, you are too... <clears throat> Kenya, you're too well seasoned and and desirable on the outside to be so cuckoo on the inside and have to <laughs> and have to do something like this. You know, girl, you don't have to stage something. Just get out there and make it happen for yourself. <laughs> and by the way, Matt, you're fired. You're fired. I'm gonna hire a new boyfriend. One who will pay attention to the rules of my game. On another note, so Apollo and Phaedra, um, uh, we're gonna talk about them on the inside scoop a little bit later on. I got you, the Apollo and the Ph I got you, I got you. So in the meantime, so, so, <clears throat> so when I finally do settle down to TV, it's nine o'clock, time for Mariah's World. I watched last night, it was fun. I love that Mariah, she came off as a better mom. You know, not like, you know, I made a comment. Her kids just last week, that was the first episode, they seemed like an accessory. This week, between um, the edit room floor and cutting and pasting, they pasted something together. She came off as a better mom. And... <laughs> she talked about why it is that she only likes to be photographed on her right side. And she says that when she was 19 years old, a photographer said it's her best side. I hate when people put things in your head because if you're not strong enough to, you know, like repel those things, they stick in your head like for the rest of your life. I don't notice a good side or a bad side on Mariah. I don't notice a good side or a bad side on anybody. I don't pick a good side or a bad side. It's just that when I wear a side part, you know, you gotta figure out what hand you're comfortable with judging your hair. That's the only reason. <laughs> No, it really, it, like the, the side, when I do a side part, it has nothing to do with, oh, I think this side is better, even though this side is the one with the stronger dimple. <laughs> you know, but, but I don't necessarily think that that's better. It's just that I feel more comfortable when I do this. You know, when I mess with my hair, it feels more comfortable, you know, on this side. And when I, the side of the couch that I sit on, I, you know, when I got the talk show, I would have sat in the middle of the couch. They're like, but Wendy, you have to, you know, make room for your guests. I said, all right, well, I'll pick a side. They said, well, whatever side you pick, do you have a better side? People always think that people have a better side, which is always shocking to me. I'm like, no, I don't have a better side. You know, just, just take the picture, just take the picture. Yeah. Let me tell you something, honey. It is cold, wet, and gray here in New York. And after this show is done, all I want to do is go home. So I have got no time for you and a photo shoot afterwards. <laughs> so thank you for making with the clickety click. We're multitasking. We'll be back in bed by noon. <laughs> anyway. Um, <laughs> um, Mariah posted a picture this weekend with Beyonce. Now you can imagine Beyonce shows up at your concert and all of a sudden you say, oh wait, now hold on. Let me get to the other side, <laughs> you know, to take this picture. Uh, Beyonce, you look cute. I'm just not into the hats. Mm -hmm. uh, Suzanne? Yeah, I'm not into the hats. Are you either. a hat? I like like a hat to keep you warm. Right. Not a hat to just wear a hat. Yeah, like a fashion hat. Yes, yeah. yes. I just don't like a hat that you could pluck off. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like if I wear a hat, it's got to fit to my head, mm -hmm. you know, close and snug. Mm -hmm. but, um, but Beyonce looks great. Mariah, you look terrific. Mariah. Mm. <laughs> so random. So you know, I was at QVC this past weekend. Shout out to everybody who participated. Thank you so much. <laughs> my Wendy Williams collection. Okay.
The thing about, excuse me, uh, HSN, I'm sorry, HSN, HSN. The thing about HSN that I love is that you never know who you're gonna run into in the halls. You know, like a lot of people, you know, Iman has stuff there. You know, I love my joy with those huggable hangers. Uh, Deborah Lippman, she does the nail polish. I ran into her there. So I'm about to go on to the set. And you know, HSN, they're in Tampa. It's 32 acres. It's, it's a giant uh, property. And there's a whole bunch of different sound stages. So my, it so happens that my set, um, was on the same sound stage as Randy Jackson. Now Randy Jackson has these fabulous guitars. He was on, he was my lead in. He was on right before me and then a lot of times they might play maybe five minutes of commercials in between before they start the next host, that would be me. So Randy takes his microphone off and he's about to you know, leave the building and, and I'm about to take my seat and talk to you guys. So. I see Randy, now you know he's been here before, and he's one of these people, sometimes you don't have to say a lot, all you have to do is, mm -hmm. <laughs> So I see Randy, we hug, and then I back him up, I hold him by the shoulders, and I go, why? And he's like, I don't know. <laughs> now mind you, he used to be Mariah's manager. He knows her very, very well. But the crazy thing about our conversation is that it was just a hug and a, why? <laughs> and then he says, I talked to her three days before this was all supposed to be finalized and I told her that this was not going to be a good look. Like this whole reality TV, it just like, I, it's entertaining to watch, but it destroys lives and it exposes things about people that sometimes people don't want exposed. And I just, anyway, like a five, it, like a 45 second conversation, but it was all about, mm-mm, mm-mm. <laughs> then I was like, okay, I gotta go. And Randy's like, I gotta go. He's like, bye. <laughs> that was it. So. Suzanne called to check up on me while I was at HSN, I by the sure way. I sure did. What was that all about? Well, I was in my office and I was wearing the Today Special and I wanted to show it to you. And Eden was in the background? Yes, so Eden was on the couch. I said, Eden, stay right behind me and when I get up, I'll be like, there's Eden. And it was perfect. Yeah, he does. He, he couldn't works, stop he, waving. Yeah, no. Well, he, he waved even after the shot was over. Yeah. He was so like. <gasps> well, he's got little kids, so he's yeah. just happy to be out of the house. Exactly, exactly. You know. mm -hmm. Okay, so. <laughs> Sherry Shepard. Sherry. Sherry. <laughs> Sherry. <laughs> if you just Google schmoogled him, you would have seen he hadn't worked a steady job since 2008. By the time you all got together in 2011, that had been three years of unemployment, best I could see. And I get it that he's good friends with Niecy Nash and Niecy was having a barbecue and you thought, you know, sometimes you feel as that if you have a decent friend, then anybody who's gonna be at the barbecue is gonna be a decent person. But we're a little too old to believe that just cause our friends are friends with somebody that that friend is a decent person, right? right. Sherry's ex, that. His name is Lamar. He's only 43 years old. Oh. <laughs> Times are hard. <laughs> Lamar is trying to get more money from Sherry cause Sherry's career is judged up. Yeah. Okay, remember Sherry uh, was ordered to pay Lamar $4,100 per month in child support for the baby that they had via a surrogate. It's his sperm attached to an athletic black woman's egg. And the athletic, uh, and then they got a, a third person, right? To yeah. carry the baby. Do you follow what I'm saying? Yeah. So in, in other words, the baby has no DNA ties to Sherry. But she and Lamar were married and they made an agreement. According to TMZ, Lamar wants to increase his child support payments because he believes Sherry is now making more money. Aww. Originally, when they went to court, he believed at first she was making a million dollars a year, but now he's seeing that she's still doing stand-up, she's got her wig line, and she's got a sitcom coming up on NBC starring John Lithgow. Now, you know, John Lithgow's got um, Emmy, he's got a war, you know. He, you know, 
So this sitcom takes off. He's projecting that her income now will be $3 million a year and he wants his fair share to take care of this baby who, remember, is not her biological. You know, the baby is the bio of the tall athletic woman and that. <clears throat> The, the, the baby is very, very cute, like two years old. Apparently he's going to get his first haircut. Clearly it's not in the hood. Look, I see hardwood floors. <laughs> he, I bet you he's gonna run outside. He's got keys to a Jaguar off Sherry's money. But you know what, Sherry, if you thought he was cute at the barbecue, you shouldn't have, you, I mean, that's one thing. But after you do your research and see, you know, the girls, there are guys that are good for certain things and guys that are good for keeping. This guy might have been a certain thing. It's definitely not the keeper guy. So Sherry, now you've got to lie on that sword because here's, <clears throat> here's my deal. Yes, this guy needs to go out and get a job on one hand, but if this was a woman, we would be saying, now wait, hold on. She's at home all day taking care of a little goober. But at two years old, you could certainly maybe get a job and send him to the block academy up the block. You know they sit there and they play with them blocks. And then you pick them up after work. Or maybe he wants to be more of a stay at home uh, dad. Which at two years old, if, if a woman wanted to stay at home at two and collect child support, we wouldn't be making as big of a deal about it. I just hate the way we wanna be equal, but sometimes we can't accept it, me too included, because I gotta tell you one thing about the equality these days, and Suzanne and I totally agree on this. We've talked about it several times, mm -hmm. Mr. Mom. Mm -hmm. something, mm -hmm. There's something mm -hmm. about that, mm -hmm. guys. Not sexy. They're, they're, it's, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, sometimes in families, you know, dads have to stay home for a particular reason. Maybe they're laid off or whatever, and they do a pretty reasonable job, you know, around the house, swiftering and taking mm -hmm. care of the babies and stuff. But it's my, it's my, in my mind, you're only doing this until the economy breaks and you go back to work. Mm -hmm. Like, I, how do you expect me? I come in all day. I throw my wig down. I got my briefcase. <laughs> and you're standing with the baby on one hip, you know, while, you know, stirring, you know, dinner. I can deal with that for a, a bit of time, but I can't let that be your way of, I'm just not into it. Like when young Kev was younger, you know, when moms had to attend the play dates and you couldn't just push him out of the car and let him crawl inside and play. <laughs> you know, you gotta go inside and mingle with the other moms. Which is actually quite fun. I, I, I do miss those days because now at 16, you know, you don't know any of the moms unless you, you know, force it like, you know, all right, well, who's the mom or who's the dad? But back in those days, you know, sitting around the kitchen table and the kids would all look so cute, like 15 rugrats just running around the family room and all of us moms sitting and talking about mom stuff, just regular stuff. And then next thing you know, the final kid comes to the party and it's with a Mr. Mom and you're not just dropping her off even though we're insisting, no, we'll watch Emily, no, no, we'll watch Emily, no, Bob, 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 please don't, damn it. <laughs> Bob is pulling out a kitchen chair and now we can't have tampon talk because now Bob is here. No, you know what I'm saying, ladies, you know how we talk differently and when men show up at play dates and stuff and then you wanna stay? <laughs> And now here I am. I remember I used to be a lunch lady back when you know Kevin was younger and I wanted to see what was going on at the school. And I was, oh yes, with the net on my hair and everything because I wouldn't have to work my radio shift until two o'clock in the afternoon. So I would go and do lunch lady and I'd be with you know all the other you know moms and then here comes Bob again. <laughs> Get out of here with that. So this guy wants more money, the wildebeest. You, you know what? And it's unfortunate that, well, you know, cause I'm, I'm team Sherry, even though Sherry was wrong for, I mean, this whole thing, maybe she wanted a storyline on The View. Cause you know, it's not just reality TV, you know, sometimes when you're on a panel show and you need a storyline, maybe to, you know, keep your thing hot or I, I, Sherry girl, you made that bed. 
and you gotta deal with it for the next 18 years. And it's unfortunate because she's a celebrity, she can't hide her raise, you know, like you can if you're in the private sector. You know, her raise is all over Variety Magazine and inside the National Enquirer. Oh, Sherry Shepard just got a new job doing this. And in the meantime, this man is right here salivating probably over, <laughs> mm, the Mercedes dealer closes at what time? Good luck, Sherry, we're following the story. <laughs> Financially speaking, she would have probably done better if she just filed for full custody, tried to determine that he was crazy and just kept the baby herself. You know, but, you know, but, but that, that's, that's your son, Sherry. That, that's your son. That, clap if you think that's Sherry's son. Clap if you think, oh no, it's not. Okay. It's 50-50. It's 50-50. Well, we'll be following that story because we're nosy. <laughs> and let me tell you something. When you are a girlfriend, you are not entitled to have to pay child support to your boyfriend's babies. So baby's moms, step off. <laughs> I don't mean to be angry, I'm not mad at you all, but I get mad at these stories sometimes because the nerve of people to think they can just do a quick come up these days off you know, a hard working person's back. The nerve, and it's not even like 18 year olds and 25 year olds, grown people. <clears throat> like the wildebeest are trying to, oh no, I have another one for you. Oh. Renee Zellweger. Oh. Well, you know Renee. She's being dragged into a really messy situation. She's got this boyfriend. They've been together for like four years. Renee's got no children. The, the man was married to, <laughs> what the Howard Stern is going on? <laughs> no, no. During our morning briefing, you guys didn't show me his picture. Oh, you did that to surprise me? <laughs> you know I love a surprise. That's a good one. Okay, well he's not your man, don't judge. This is Renee's man, she adores him. They've been together for four years. He was married to a woman for seven years. They've got two daughters. Okay, you follow me? Here's the woman, beautiful girl, right? 52 years old, she's one of, she was one of the Prince girls. I don't know whether she played a guitar or the drums or backup sang or what, but she's one of the Prince girls. It's good hair, it's good skin, tasteful makeup, good eyebrows, but she's looking at us like, mm-hmm. <laughs> Cause you know what she's doing? This dude lives with Renee. She doesn't have a bunch of money. Prince is now passed on. I guess the band has dismantled, whatever. She wants money from Renee Zellweger to pay for their kids. Cause she's mad that, that um, he's gone on with his life and now is living in the Zellweger compound. And uh, you know, I guess with you know, minimal income and two girls to take care of, you know, when the girls go over, I guess, and see you know, him at the Zellweger compound, they come back, they've got you know, all the clothes and you know, Maybe they go to Europe with Renee and the man, I don't know. But um, you can't go, woman, you can't go after Renee's money. This is so unfair. And Renee, I'm pissed for us because, <laughs> no, I, I am, I'm pissed. I'm pissed and here's why. First of all, I enjoy marriage, you know? I mean, I guess I can get used to living with somebody. Me, Wendy, I enjoy marriage. Like if, if I got divorced, I would still marry again. If I got divorced again, I would still marry again. I like being married. <laughs> so, so anyway, how about this? What if Renee, who, what, she's got one more egg left? She's 47. 40 <laughs> It's a one hour show, we've gotta to get to the point. She's 47 years old, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Okay. What if Renee wants to have children 
And what if for the last four years she spent time falling in love with this guy? And you see ratchet, ratchetness in baby's moms early on in relationships. I just wish that I was there on her shoulder to tell her, you know what, you might love him, but the baby's mom's gonna get in the way because now we're four years in, her heart is deep. You know girls, at 47 years old, when you've been with somebody for four years and you've got one rotten egg left. <laughs> All right, maybe you can have the baby, but if you're, if, you're, if you're like me and you like to be married, I wouldn't marry him. Oh, hell no. The reason why is cause of her. This woman, as soon as Renee marries him, then this woman is gonna really have a legal leg to stand on. In the meantime, woman, pretty, I'm trying to temper it with something nice. You know, you say something nice and then you throw sugar, you salt in the wound. Let me tell you something pretty. You're still um, juicy enough to go out there and date and, and get on you know, with your life and it sucks that you invested seven years in a marriage and divorce sucks. And it's horrible when you see your man go off to a woman that you might perceive as being in a better situation than you. That must suck. <laughs> but what you're doing with all this behavior is you are blocking yourself from being dateable by any other man. Yeah. Listen. Listen. In my opinion, girls who make trouble in previous relationships become undateable for the future relationships. Same thing with guys. You know, if you're busy throwing rocks at windows, you know, chasing your girlfriend down, who wants to date you after you all finally break up? <laughs> now, who wants to date her? You know, there, there's got to be something better. I would be seething as well, but leave Renee Zellweger's money alone because you are playing yourself by going after, in my opinion. That's not, that's not your man's husband. Oh. What are you watching on TV tonight? I have two great suggestions. Rita Ora, who by the way, was a fabulous guest last week. Right? So I'm watching America's Next Top Model tonight, the premiere of the new season with Rita at the helm. Uh, Tyra is still there, but she's in the background. I'm watching that. And of course, I'm watching my love and hip hop. <laughs> and the series creator, Mona Scott Young, will be here on Wednesday. In the meantime, we've got more great show for you, everybody. We've got hot holiday gifts for everyone on your list, but up next, the inside scoop on Johnny Depp's divorce and Apollo Nida's new fiance. So grab a snack and come on.